welcome to today's study of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Join Dr. Sumrall as he shares with you the in-depth knowledge he's received from the Holy Spirit in over 60 years of ministry. Now you can read a novel when you get through. <laughs> you only read a lie. Somebody conceived it in their brain. Uh, you can study science. It'll change by next week. But you can study the Word of God, and it's forever. And it's eternally true. It doesn't even need interpretation. It needs you to say, thus saith the Lord. Because when it says, thus saith the Lord, it's thus saith the Lord. And, and uh, if we'd have uh, less people interpreting and more people screaming, thus saith the Lord, you'd have greater effects because the Word of God is powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, and it can pierce <clears throat> unbelief and doubt and ignorance and so forth. What a wonderful power is the Word of the Lord. Our whole world is on the eve of its final revival in the Gentile dispensation or the dispensation of grace. And this re next revival will be very much like the one in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. If you will study the Acts of the Apostles, I use one of my syllabus on it, uh, over 50 demonstrations of the gifts of the Spirit are in that one book. So the Lord spoke to me and said, it's not organization that's going to bring the last great revival, but it, and not necessarily people that claim to be uh, a bishop or an archbishop or something, uh, because you'll notice that I, I chose a, a deacon to be the, the first martyr. <laughs> Priorities are going to change in this world that we live in today. The hierarchy will be reduced and God's beautiful children will be exalted. Are you ready for that? And today we are studying definitions on that power that's going to change the world. It's a good thing to have stored away in your inner being, to know that you know and be sure that you are sure. You will notice that there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Being nine gifts, <clears throat> this equals three times three. Because number three is the number of divine perfection in the Word of God. Maybe sometime I'll give you a full lesson on that. Everything in the universe, all scientists know this, that everything in the universe that's perfect is stamped with a three. Just like man is perfect and so he is stamped with a spirit, soul, and a body. The tree outside is perfect because it is stamped with a bark and then with a pulp and then with a sap. You can't eliminate any one of the three or the tree ceases to exist. And heaven is perfect as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So you touch it and it's always three. The gifts of the Spirit are three times three, which means perfection times perfection. And when God goes so strong on a thing like that, you should give some attention to it because they, they are very important to our knowledge of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, we have the listing of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It says, to one is given by the Spirit. The word Spirit there is with a capital S, meaning, meaning the person of the Holy Ghost. By the Spirit the word of wisdom, say word. word, then it's not the gift of wisdom. It's only a word of God's wisdom. A word is an offspring of a thought. So the great thought, which is God the Father, permits an offspring from him to come, and that becomes a word of his wisdom. This is a gift that speaks of the future and, and uh, is related to that which is not born yet, a word of God's wisdom. Then he says unto another is given the word of knowledge. Say word. word. You don't get all of his knowledge, of course, but you get a word of it. You get a vibration of it. You get a, a touch of it. You get a portion of it. You get a segment of it. 
and, and that is what we know about the word of knowledge. Knowledge, of course, is a fact. So it's not the word of wisdom, the unborn. It is the born. He lets you know that which is, which does now exist, you see. And, and through you knowing what is, you, you have a word of his knowledge. And, and that's the difference between the word of wisdom, which is that which is unborn, hasn't come to pass yet, as Daniel had, Ezekiel had, all the great prophets of the word had, Jesus had, Paul had, Peter had. But uh, knowledge is that which has already come to pass. Uh, you have a word of that knowledge. To another there is, is faith by the same spirit. And then to another, the gifts of healing. You might underline that little word, gifts. It's the only plural of the nine gifts. Uh, you say, how many gifts of healing are, are there? There could possibly be as many gifts of healing as there are diseases. Categories of diseases. As many gifts of the Spirit. I'm not a physician, so I can't tell you. It could be possible that there are 39 categories of disease on the face of the earth. And by his stripes were healed, one stripe for each category. And if that be so, then, then, then in every category of man's illness, we have a stripe on his back, a healing, efficacious stripe that would remove disease or sickness or hurt from that person. Anyway, there are gifts of healing. No one person has ever had the gift of healing except Jesus. Jesus healed everyone that came to him. Nobody else has ever done it. Paul could not do it. Peter could not do it. Uh, Peter got into a, a, very, a very sad state. His own mother-in-law had a fever, and she called him in for healing. And, and uh, if you ever want to heal anybody, it's your mother-in-law. You're already so far down in the grade until you hardly recognize that if you could get your mother-in-law healed, you could upgrade yourself, and he couldn't make it. He had to call for Jesus to come in and just to take a fever away. And he must have watched it very carefully and wondered why he didn't do it, you know. Paul didn't do it. He left his, his workers behind because they couldn't, had no more strength to follow him uh, because he wasn't able to heal them. You, you, you say, what are you trying to tell us? If you were God, you could heal everybody. But seeing that you're not God, you only have one of the gifts or two of the gifts. Now, I've done some research in this area that you would be very interested in. I've taken these men of God that have had healing ministries and laid their magazines down like this for a whole year. And when you do, you see something very remarkable. The testimonies run in a straight line there. You know, they don't run all over the page. You'll discover that they only have one or two or three areas in which people are healed in their meetings and they unconsciously told you about it. And if you study that, you'll discover where they have the gift at, you see. And, and, and if you study a dozen of those, it's very interesting because no two of them will have exactly the same gifts of healing in them. And verse 10 says, And to another he gave the working of miracles. It is not a miracle with God. It's only a miracle with you. So it means that you work that which was beyond human effort and beyond human power. And then you call it a miracle. God doesn't call it a miracle. He makes new moons and new suns and new galaxies every night. So he's not, he's not bothered about miracles. He is omnipotent in, in his functions and operations. But you're not. And if God does something through you, like David killing a lion or killing a bear uh, with his naked hands, uh, that is a miracle, you see but not a miracle with God. It's only a miracle with you, the working of miracles to another prophecy and to another the, the discerning of spirits. Now, this is not the discerning of devils. Some people have a real ability to discern devils where there aren't any. And, and uh, so we're not talking about that. When they brought Philip to the Lord Jesus, he says, Behold an Israelite in whom there's no guile. You see, he discerned him. And, and the time will come in this mighty search of God that we are involved in right now, that we'll know who's true and who's not true. And those preachers that yell the loudest might be the ones who will say, would you go sit down? You're not living right. 
If the gift of discernment had been functioning in the church in the last 10 or 15 years, brother, we could have cleaned house in the pew and in the pulpit. And if we'd have done that, we'd have had a thousand times more done for God. When men live without the fear of God, that they sin and act like they are not sinners, that's when you should have the gifts of the Holy Spirit functioning. But the full gospel people are a people, if you'd like to write it down, they're too soon satisfied. If they get just a little bit of the power of God, they go ripping and snorting as if they got two-thirds of heaven inside of them, and they've only got a drop. And, and uh, we're too soon satisfied. <clears throat> when the gifts of the Spirit begin to function, we should move in heavy and say, let's get a little more of this. We want more of it. We, we're, we're interested in more of it, you see. And, and, then, and then they would function more. But when you become satisfied, that's all you're going to get. You know, if, if your little jug is full, if you put something in the jug, you've wasted it. And, and our jugs were too full too soon. We should have enlarged the jug. And all the people said, the discerning of spirits and another diverse kinds of tongues. <clears throat> now, this does not have to do with your experience when you receive the Holy Ghost. This is not your prayer language that God gives you to communicate with God, to build up yourself. That which Paul said he spoke more than a whole church full of people. He's not talking about that. This is a public utterance, and this is a public ministry, and this is a special gift. We do not all have that gift for church work, but we do have the original gift of the Holy Spirit where we have a prayer language as we have in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 19. And it says, and to another the interpretation of tongues. Uh, those are two that go together and reveal the supernaturalness of the gifts of the Spirit functioning in the area of the gifts of inspiration. Uh, that uh, when we have uh, this function, you see one here speak with a spiritual language and another here interpret what has been said. <clears throat> uh, a word that maybe you ought to write it down because very few people seem to recognize it. Uh, when someone interprets in tongues, they're not translating. They don't have a paragraph they're going to translate it. It doesn't say that. It says an interpretation. That means that he with his ability would say it one way, but he with his ability would say it another way, and she with her ability would say it another way, but the source is the same. The source the Holy Ghost, you see, that is the same. But what we have received, he uses your ability to express it. But if you were to study it, the essence of it, the God part of it, is the same message to the church, which always has to do with the building up of the body. Now in verse 11 it says, but all of these, say all. <laughs> that don't mean part of them. That don't mean a segment of them. That don't mean just the small ones like the gifts of inspiration. All of these work. How many glad they work? All of these work. That one and self-same spirit. You say, what is God trying to tell us? There might be nine gifts, but there's only one spirit. The Holy Spirit. You may function in the gift of the word of knowledge. You may function in the gift of the word of wisdom, but there's not two spirits, there's one spirit. Or you may just give this spirit of prophecy. The spirit of the gift of prophecy is a combination of the gift of speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues. The source is the same. It's, it's, in, it's inspiration. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, it tells you the three operations in the gift of prophecy. And that's the three operations of the speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues. And so when you have those three functioning together, then you have the building up of the church. But he says he wants you to know that they all work and come from one spirit, not two spirits. God doesn't have two spirits. He has one spirit. That means that we, whatever we do coordinates with what somebody else does. Whatever we say flows with what someone else has said. They're not contrary spirits. One saying one thing, one saying another thing. One saying Jesus comes soon, say no, and the next one says no, he's not coming for a long time. Then that is not the Holy Spirit speaking because he says there is unity in the Spirit. It's the self-same Spirit. And dividing, dividing to every man. Say every man. Say every man. What does it mean? It means all of you. 
There's so many people who say, well, now let him do this and let him have that. And I'll just sit here and listen. Uh, the Bible says, every man. How many of you will concede that this word man means woman? Well, four or five ladies spoke and the rest of you men were pretty glum. <laughs> I believe it means the total church, the total body of Christ. Yeah. In Christ, there's neither male nor female. Uh, in, in Christ, there's unity in every aspect of our living. Can you say amen? A dividing to every man. Well, uh, that means a lot of us are going to have to get going. Uh, we hadn't gotten in our share of it yet. But then it also, the next word says severally. Severally. That means you don't stop when you get one. That you move forward in it. You say, how do you move forward in it? That's what these lessons are about. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a very strong way. Then look at the last three words. It says, as he, as he wills. As he wills. You, you're not running off down the street with all the power of God <laughs> to do whatever you please. We're still functioning on the supervision of the Holy Ghost. How many? Yeah. We're, we're all functioning under his guidance. We're not saying, I'll do as I please, I'll do as I please. And I'll do. No, we don't do that. We function as the Holy Ghost wills. He is the coordinator of all functions in the body of Christ today. <clears throat> and you and I live and work inside of that. That as the will of God is, as the will of the Holy Ghost is, as the will of Jesus is, we function in their will. That what does God want during this meeting? What, do, what would hinder God from doing what he wants to do in this meeting? Uh, is the overindulgence in something that grieves God in a meeting, you see. We have to work as he wills. <clears throat> Your point number one is very significant in that it, it rebukes almost the total religious world, including the Pentecostal denominations, that all these gifts are supernatural. Every one of them is supernatural. None of them has to do with your mind, your brain, or your self-will. Paul cho ch shows it clearly in verse 11 that these gifts are miraculously bestowed, that you don't grow into them. You, they are gifts. And you don't merit them. They're gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can prepare your heart to be a vessel that can be used. But he is the giver. He is the giver of all these gifts. These gifts cannot be acquired by the human mind or the human emotions. Now, most denominations don't believe that at all. They think these are some operations they don't quite understand. But that they're human operations. And, and they are worked. And your B part here, it, it tells you, example, King Solomon did not possess the gift of the word of wisdom. You see, there were men in his time that did, but it wasn't him. He requested of God for an enlarged brain, like some others have done later, in order to govern a nation, and God gave it to him. He did not use it in a spiritual capacity. He did not he did not use this enlarged brain and this cleverness in a spiritual capacity as the gifts of the Spirit are used, but he used it to build up his nation and to build himself up. You can read his story in Second Chronicles chapter 1 there, uh, verses 10 to 12. Now, it's very important that you come uh, to know this because uh, when, you, when you leave this class, you're going to have to face people that believe it, the opposite as you do. They're going to bring these gifts down to a natural level uh, that when you get to be smart, you have that gift of wisdom. And when you've learned a lot in your brain, you have knowledge that they don't, they don't ever use the word word, the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge because that throws them off the track. Uh, they, 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 it, the gift is limited to the omniscience and the omnipotence of the almighty God. And you only receive that which he sees it wise for you to receive. And so it is a word that he gives unto us and not the full function of the Godhead. But it, until you realize it, you only do this under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And you don't do it in your natural abilities, then you will never come to understand uh, these, the, 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 these things. Uh, we were traveling in Tibet 
And about two o'clock one morning, we slept in the loft where they kept the hay and our animals were downstairs eating all night, and moving around and making noises. It's amazing how you get used to sleep with them. But coming up the little steps that we got up into the attic with, uh, into the loft, uh, was a lantern and, and some people speaking in Chinese. I interpreted, jumped up and said, who are you and what you want? And there were three men. And he said, where are you from? They said, three days journey from here. And, and says, what are you doing here? He said, three days ago, we had a big quarrel in our church. And the Lord spoke to us and said, if you will go three days journey and directly east, you will intercept three men, myself, Brother Carter, and our interpreter. And they will tell you how to, how to take care of the problem in your church. Those men traveled three days, walked into that horse inn, and, and said, we got a problem in our church. Brother Carter, who is a theologian and especially one uh, operating a local church, explained what the Bible said about their problem. That's what they needed, you know. So they could write it down. You can say what I think, or you can say what the Bible says. He showed them what the Bible says about about their problem. And those three men wrote it all down. We said, now lie down on the straw and sleep a little. They said, we don't have time. The church is still waiting for us. They got on their mules and away they went three days journey back to the church with the answer to their problems, you see. Who told them that in three days, we were moving every day. Every day we moved. Who could tell them that in three days? We were three days' journey from that spot. Who could tell them that if they moved for three days, these three, these three white people would be there? Only the Holy Ghost, you see. Only the power of God, you see. Now, it is possible for our church to come to a place where God can make revelation to us that is astounding, but it won't be natural. It'll be supernatural. Can you say amen? In the rest of this uh, lesson here, it says there are three categories of gifts. There are gifts of power and, and, and of strength, gifts of revelation, and gifts of inspiration. Each one has three gifts in it. And then you have the, de the definition of the three categories there. Then you have the defining of the gifts, which we have carefully done in the last few moments of the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, and right straight down. All, all of these, until you get down uh, to the gift of prophecy, uh, when it is an anointed speaking forth of words of edification, exhortation, and comfort. Now that's built into the church as we saw that. Uh, there will be people in the class today and you will need one of these three things and it can be given to you by tongues and interpretation. And if you sit quietly today, you, you will, you, you'll, you'll hear that. And it, it can be uh, in uh, either edification, the word edification means to be built up. Some of us need to be built up stronger and higher. Exhortation means don't quit, don't stop. It's time to move forward in God and comfort. There are many people that are sad, that are hurt, that are beaten back, and they need the comfort of the Holy Ghost in order that they might be a victorious a, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God used these supernatural gifts to come and to change our natural persons into the spiritual. And so what God wants us to do is to come to understand what we're talking about. These gifts will never be able to function in our lives if we're full of ignorance. They can function once, and I could give you illustrations of this. Oh, you would be amazed. When one of the gifts of the Spirit functioned in one of our full gospel churches, the pastor declared the woman was a witch and asked her not to come back anymore. I mean, he was so far off base, he didn't know when God spoke and when God didn't speak, and he was a full gospel man, you see, pastor. So if we're not careful, we will live so full of ignorance that when God gives the new revival, he'll give it to somebody else who has an open heart to it. Now here's something for you to write down. Very few humans ever proceed further than their first revelation from God. They don't grow. 
that thing they get the first little spot, that's all they have the rest of their lives. Born a Baptist, die a Baptist, born a Presbyterian, die a Presbyterian, born a Lutheran, die a Lutheran. You never find that God has a little bit more for you than your first revelation of God. I think we should live in, in the world of a fresh revelation. God hasn't told us all he knows yet. God can still do things that hadn't been heard of in on the face of the earth yet. And so if we keep our spirits open, and if something happens, don't be critical of it, analyze it. See if it fits into the Word. And if it fits in the Word, talk to two, three other spiritual people so that you'll know that you're really moving, not in somebody's idea, but you're moving in the Word of God. And all the people said, Amen. give the Lord a hand, everybody. Now, that's the fastest lesson you ever got into. The time went so quickly, didn't it? But uh, anyway, I think, I think the Holy Spirit can bring that down strong upon your spirit that you won't forget it and that you'll learn that these gifts of the Spirit do function now. And God is ready in the fullness of His time to pour out His Holy Spirit upon the whole universal church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some will be more receptive. <laughs> Some of you may have to go to Africa to see the gifts function. Uh, I, if you can't hold it, God can give it somewhere else, you know. It's real interesting to see black men from Africa holding successful revival meetings in Europe, you know. A few years ago, Europeans went to Africa. Now Africa's coming to Europe. We can have the same in this country if you're not careful. When I was a young man, almost all of our, our powerful guest speakers were from Europe, were from, mostly from England. And suddenly, we go to England. Go over there and you just find scads of Americans preaching all over the place. You say, well, something happened there. Yeah, it sure did happen. It certainly did happen. They didn't progress forward in the gifts of the Spirit. Just because you have it today, there's no sign you're going to have it next year, you see. We got to move with God. And all the people said... One million souls for Jesus. This is the challenge. How do we meet this challenge? It's easier than you think. For just one dollar a day, you can be a part of bringing the good news of Jesus Christ to over 10 million American households. We need 20,000 partners who faithfully give. Only 20,000 partners out of 250 million people in the United States. With just one dollar a day, we could win a million souls for Jesus. It's imperative that we act now and occupy until Jesus comes. One million souls for Jesus. Now is the time. We pray that you've been blessed by today's program. For more information about Dr. Sumrall's teaching or to request audio or video cassettes of today's program, please write to Lucie, Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, 46624, or call 219-291-1010. Please refer to the program number on the screen when corresponding. Thank you.